If you're watching this video, it means you just got a ukulele and you're looking to learn, or you're a voyeur who just likes watching guys on the internet teach ukulele, which seems harmless enough, so stick around. Today we're gonna to talk about everything you need to know to get started playing ukulele, all the basics, everything going on with this instrument, and even end with a little song. All right, so first of all, let's talk about ukuleles in general. Some people will force you to pronounce it ukulele. I'm not about that life. I'm sorry, I never will be about that life. That is the proper way. Just so you know, I'm still gonna say ukulele. You don't have to flame me in the comments, but also feel free to do that too. This is a Martin T1, okay? The T stands for tenor. Tenor means it's a type of size. There are four different sizes of ukulele. Soprano, concert, tenor, and baritone. So your ukulele might not be the same size as this. It'll probably be a similar shape. Some of them are different shapes too. Some of them don't have like little cutaways. This one is kind of made to look like a mini guitar body almost. Again, this is Martin Streetmaster T1. One interesting thing about this, has a, it has a pickup too, so you can plug this into an amp. Not all of them are like that. But other than that, they're gonna be pretty much the same, okay? Specifically, the sopranos, concerts, and tenors will be tuned the same, okay? The tuning is just the names of these strings. G, C, E, A. That tried and true ukulele sound. Da, 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 da. You're gonna wanna try to commit the, the sound of these pitches to memory because it'll be a lot easier to tune. Now, a baritone ukulele, the bigger one, the one that's bigger than this, is actually tuned uh, D, G, B, E. Just like the, the highest four strings on a guitar. In fact, a regular tuned ukulele like this is really just the same as the highest four strings with a capo on the fifth fret of a regular guitar, right? Okay, now the one difference is on a ukulele, the lowest string, the string closest to your face, is actually tuned higher than the strings below it. Okay, so G, C, E, A usually helps come up with a little sentence to remember that. Giant children eat animals is the sentence that I made up. You can make up maybe like a, a more appropriate sentence for, for whatever your needs are, but you wanna make sure that it's in tune first. So you tune it by taking these little tuning pegs on this guitar, they're on the back of the headstock. Sometimes it could be sprouting out from the sides. Either way, just tune it left to right to try to get G, C, E, A. You can find those pitches with like an app on your phone, right like that. See, it'll like give you, if you strike it, it'll show you that, look, I'm a little, I'm just a little flat right now, but that's okay. We're close enough. Or you could get like a headstock tuner that you can kind of clip on here and then it'll kind of just show you, right? The, the phone ones are usually pretty fine, right? So, G, C, E, A, giant children eat animals. Once your ukulele is mostly in tune, then you can start playing songs on it, all right? Now, the beautiful thing about uke is, we call it uke for short, a little shorthand action, is it's so easy to play chords, and chords are how you play songs, all right? Chord is anytime you play three different notes on any instrument at the same time, okay? Beautiful thing about it, the most popular key that people sing in is the key of C. All right, so if we just take our, the third fret, and again, these little bars on the fretboard are called frets, right? Take third fret, hold it down. That's the third fret. So open on the, the highest string, remember G, C, E, A. Open on the A string, would just be a zero. This would be the first fret, second fret, third fret. If we just hold down that third fret, and see, I'm kind of pinching it. I'm not exactly right on the bar, I'm just behind the bar, okay? So, don't death grip it, usually a pretty light pinch against that fretboard. So think of where your thumb is as leverage, so you're not just kind of coming down in space, kind of pushing it against your body, right? If you just comfortably wrap your hand around like this, you can get down just behind that third fret and hold it down, all right? Now, this note, all by itself is a C note, right? Once we add other notes to kind of combine with that, to harmonize with that note, we end up getting a chord. Like I said, different chords, right? So when I do this, I'm playing a G note, a C note, an E note, and another C note. In fact, these two are the same note at different pitches. Okay, so when I strum all of them together, C major, this is our first chord. All right, so let's take this as an opportunity 
Just to talk about strumming, a lot of different ways you can do it. You can use your fingers or you can use a pick, all right? There are different advantages to each way. How we're gonna do this, we're gonna make a strumming pattern, right? It's gonna sound like this. Okay, so a pattern is something you can repeat. That's something you're gonna wanna really kinda ingrain and get into your, your rhythm right away. The best way to do that is to learn how to count musically. So I don't want this to be like a whole super crazy lesson about everything you're gonna get. This is just a crash course and I'll have other lessons. On this channel, if you guys are interested, definitely you know sign up, subscribe, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next because I'm gonna be uploading this channel regularly with different song lessons and everything. But getting a pattern down is really important. So getting good tone. From this, we got that C major chord, and now we're gonna apply a pattern where your, your fretting hand does not have to move, it just sits right here. So you might wanna remember this is down, down, up, up, down, up, okay? So if that's our pattern, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, repeat. So now I just repeat that pattern, right? You'll notice that I'm strumming the down strokes with my thumb, and I'm strumming the up notes with my pointer finger, okay? The reason I'm doing it this way is because the flesh of my fingers, thumb to pointer, is gonna create a similar tone, right? Sounds pretty fluid. I could just go use the thumb for both down and up. Now, you know, that works. I do think that the consistency of getting your thumbnail on the way up and your thumb pad on the way down can be a little distracting. That's why I like doing the thumb like that. Or the inverse of that, where I'm going down with my pointer finger, so I'm getting the nail of my pointer finger to go down and then my thumbnail to go up. Here's the difference, pads. nails. You, playing with your nails sounds a little bit more like playing with, with a guitar pick. So the advantages are you can probably get a little more volume with a pick or with your nails, but it's also going to amplify your mistakes a little bit more when you're first starting out. So that's why playing with like the pads of your fingers might be the preferable way to start out with because you're kind of... You're learning a lot at once. Having a hole to pick the right way might not be what you want to focus on. You want to focus on getting good tone and getting your fret hand in position where it's not buzzy or something like that. Reasons a fret or a string might buzz is if you're not holding it either hard enough or close enough to the fret. What I mean by that is if I'm back, remember I said close to that third fret without really touching it, as I get back further, What's happening is I'm pinching the string, but since I'm not pinching it at the fret, you're hearing the sound of the unpinched part of the string vibrate and resonate against the metal fret. So that's what that buzzing means. So either you have to get closer to the fret or hold down a little bit harder, right? So again, that's why the optimum, optimum spot, optimal spot to hold a fret is right before the bar. And that's when it's usually gonna sound the cleanest, right? So now that we have that, again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. As long as you can make it sound good, it works, right? But I usually go down with pointer finger, nail, up, thumbnail, right? And again, eventually you're gonna learn how to count this musically. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Those are two ways to count the same thing, again. One pattern, usually usually music is organized in bars, right? One and two and three and four and. That's one count, one bar of four. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. See how those actions get attached to a number? Don't overload yourself on that right now, but that is something that you definitely will want to learn and we'll have more lessons on that coming soon. But just to get started, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. Okay, so that's your first chord, all right? Now a chord can be displayed on a diagram. These diagrams are really nice because it, tell, it tells you the chord that you're playing. And then it'll also have a little box and it'll tell you which frets to hold down. Some of them will also tell you which fingers to hold down. Uh, I like the chord charts to just have little dots to show 
how wh which ones to hold down and you pick your fingers because the fingers are going to depend on the context which we're going to talk about when we get to the song all right now another thing that i think people should start out right away that doesn't always get taught this way is to learn chords in the context of groups that make sense all right some people are like well just learn these 15 chords first and then you're going to be good to go now that's great uh, I want you to learn all the chords eventually, but in any key, and most songs stay in one key, a key is just a collection of notes and chords that sound good together, there are six main chords. So it makes sense to me to learn those six chords first because they always interact with each other, all right? I'll play them through in order really quick, and then we'll come back and do the chord diagrams for each of them, all right? So we're gonna start with C major. We already did that. We can just drum it once, or we can do the pattern. After C, just like the alphabet, what comes after C? D. So in every key, all the notes of the musical alphabet, of which there are only uh, seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Some of them have sharps and flats. That'll be a separate video. But all these letters are going to be represented by either a major or minor chord, right? Like I said, there's six of them in the key of C. So we start with C, the one chord is going to be C major. The two chord is going to be a D, it's going to be D minor, it looks like this. The three chord is E minor, looks like this. The four chord is F major, looks like this. The five chord is G major, looks like that. The six chord is A minor, looks like this. The special bonus seven chord is B half diminished is what we're going to call it, looks like this, and then back to C. Okay? So we can number these chords, and really numbering these chords is super, super helpful regardless of what instrument you ever play, right? One, C major. Two, D minor. Three, E minor. Four, F major. Oh, five, G major. Six, A minor. Seven, B half diminished. And then back to one, C. Now again, this is just one way to play a C major. Any combination of these notes, C, E, and G, no matter, regardless of what pitch, you could even go like octave way up. Those are called different voicings. We're only gonna stick with the main voicings right now, but again, following this channel is gonna be, this is gonna be, we're gonna be the best uke channel on all of the internet. Huh? So you're gonna wanna stay, hang with us because we're going over all the chord voicings eventually. So again, there's our one chord, C major. The two chord. D minor, okay? So here we have the second fret of the first string. I'm gonna call this the first string, the second string, third string, fourth string, instead of, you know, the G string, C string. Some people will call it one being on the bottom, two, three, four. Come on, that doesn't make sense. We read left to right. So I'm calling this the first string, second string, third string, fourth string. We're gonna play a D minor like this. This is how you'll see it written. Now, one thing that I wanna talk about real quick Again, it's second fret on the first string, ring finger, second fret on the second string, pointer finger, first fret on the third string, is the contextual nature of all this, right? So depending on where you're going next might determine which fingers to use. In fact, a lot of times what you'll see is me play D ma a minor like this, okay? So just because there are four strings on a ukulele doesn't mean you have to play four strings every single time, right? So in fact, we're gonna get to an E minor chord next, but because of that, you'll see me play a D minor chord like this sometimes, where instead of playing two, two, one open, I'm just gonna play it, uh, I'm gonna skip the first string and then just go two, one open instead of, A lot of times there's really no, it's a negligible difference, especially when it comes to adding that first string sometimes, right? So I think sometimes it might even sound better with that open string. But again, a lot of this is contextual, so don't get caught up on doing things exactly the right way or the way that you see it or see somebody else do it, because as long as it sounds good, you're doing a great job, right? So this is how we go from a D minor into the next chord, E minor. And the best way to remember E minor is just take these two frets, these two fretted notes here, move them two frets higher. So now I've got the fourth fret on the second string and the third fret on the third string. And I'm gonna add my pointer finger to the second fret on the highest string. So this is E minor. It's really just D minor, moved two frets higher, and then adding your pointer finger. Okay, so C, D minor, E minor. The next one is really easy too. This is gonna be F major. 
my middle finger is getting the second fret of the first string open on the second string, and then my pointer finger is grabbing the first fret of the third string, F major, and then we're going to go to the next, what comes after F in the alphabet, G, we're going to go to the next chord, this is going to be G major. If you've ever played a guitar, this looks like a D major shape, okay, the shape is just how your hand is contorted into that little, this little upside down triangle, little V shape, right? Now my middle finger is on the second fret of the highest string, ring finger is third fret of the third string, pointer finger is second fret of the second string. Okay, so G major, and then the sixth most important chord on here is going to be A minor, which really is an F major without your pointer finger, so even easier. It's just the second fret on the first string, okay? So you'll notice that like a lot of these chords share notes because there's only seven notes in a key, which we'll talk about in future videos. But a lot of them are going to be similar, going to have similar sounds, but maybe just one thing is different, right? Like F major to A minor, right? Something like that. But these are going to be the six main chords, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor. And then if you really want to impress your friends on your first ukulele lesson, you can say that you're learning half diminished chords. Again, this is this, the way to think of this is take that G major and turn it upside down, right? All we're doing is taking a G major shape, and then we're taking that third string from the third fret to the first fret. So then we put your ring finger on two on the highest string, one on the third string, and the middle finger two there. So as long as I just get these, that's B half diminished. Kind of jazzy for your first lesson. Listen to you. In fact, just brag about it. Be like, huh. You know, B, I'm a, I'm a fan of that B half diminished chord. Learned it uh, 10 minutes into playing ukulele for the first time. Learned it playing ukulele. B diminished on an ukulele. That's, you know, once you start saying stuff like that, you should probably find a different channel because you're not going to last long here. But anyways, those are the seven main chords in the key of C. Again, there's a lot more to learn. But once you have that down and once you start thinking of them in numbered sequence, one, two, three, four, five five, six, seven, one, then everything's gonna be much easier to communicate from a song remembering standpoint. So now let's get to the song, right? Here's, here's all right, and I wanna do a precursor here because this is gonna be the thing that some people are gonna love, some people are gonna hate, right? There's a song out there that is semi-modern that everybody uses to play ukulele. You notice how I have removed the ukulele from the camera shot right now just to have this conversation with you. It's a song called Riptide, and everybody plays it at open mic night. Uh, everybody who's ever owned a ukulele has played it at some point. So you might as well just lean in. Might as well just lean in and make it part of what you do, even if you're just playing sarcastically, because it's super easy to do, and people are going to recognize it, and they'll be like, all right, checks out. This guy, this gal, they're a uke player. They can join the club. And then if you are like a hipster contrarian, and you have exquisite musical taste, then deep underneath you'll be like, ah, I'm only playing this to troll you. But I do legitimately know it. it sounds like this. That's the whole song. How great is that, right? It's three chords we just learned plus pretty much the exact same strumming pattern that we just did, and we can learn it right now, less than 20 minutes into your first your first experience with this instrument, all right? We're gonna start with the sixth chord in the key of C. Remember, mu the musical alphabet is only A through G, and then it just goes around in a circle. So if we start on C, where C is one, and we find the sixth chord, C, D, E, F, G, A. A minor, remember, we said is that key, the, the, the chord of this key. So it's just the second fret of the first string. Yeah, that strumming pattern that we learned, down, down, up, down, up, or one and two and three and four and, that's one bar of A minor. Then we're gonna go from here to G major, and then straight down to C major, twice. So one bar of A minor, a bar of G, and two bars of C. So let's talk about how to make this sound smooth, because even if it's easy, when you're first starting out, it's nothing's easy, right? So this is why 
those chord diagrams that have the finger that you want to use the right way to play it aren't necessarily the best thing because so much of playing any instrument is contextual as far as fingering goes, right? So if we know that we have to start on this A minor and get to this G, well, you know, all right, this is, you know, it may seem easy enough once you do it repetitively and you have that move down. That's not super easy when you first start out. So maybe when you first start out, we know that we're gonna go from this A minor to this G chord. Why don't we play that A minor with your pointer finger? Because then to get to the next chord, you just gotta go directly down a string and then have the other fingers who are hanging out right in G major land, just press down. And that's a much easier transition to make. So down, down, up. Up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay, then remember we have two bars of C. So maybe we can use your pinky because your pinky is just here, just freeloading right now, just living rent free. We can just plop that down on that C and do the two bars there. And then while you're playing these two bars, your pointer finger is already kind of making its way to where it needs to go next. So that's just kind of an efficient way to get into those shapes. Now, when you first start out, you may have never used your pinky before for anything ever in the entire history of your life. That's fine, you're gonna eventually wanna get this in the game, but you can also cheat by just taking that G and then just moving your ring finger down to the C. That's pretty much just as efficient, right? So then we've got A minor, G, C. One pro tip as far as switching chords, because switching chords is always the hardest thing to do, and especially when you apply some of these different chords to like different, you know, chord progressions and stuff. Leaving a count early to set your fretting hand up for the next chord is totally cool, and you should definitely start doing that right away. What I mean by that is your strumming hand. Try to get it at whatever speed that your strumming hand does not have to stop. If you feel like you can change chords this quickly, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. You want to get, again, I'm a right handed player, so my right hand is my strumming hand. You want to get your strumming hand to just be on autopilot where you can do this and then eventually sing along if that's your ambition, you know? Again, I don't really know. I'm gonna pretend like I don't know the lyrics. Uh, I was afraid of dentists and the dark. <laughs> if I sing any more of this song, I'm sure to get copyright infringement. But yeah, basically, once you have that strumming hand on autopilot, you are good to go. So if you have to leave, see how I did that? I kept the strumming hand going, and I'm exaggerating the movement, to jump off the fretboard to buy my fretting hand more time to get to the next chord. So again, it sounds way better to in time hit the open string set and buy your hands time to get to the next chord than it does playing on time. You're already, you're already making people suffer enough with your version of Riptide. At least make it in time at whatever speed that you want to do. So there you go. There's your first lesson on ukulele. I've got so much more to teach. We're going to try to upload to this channel every week, maybe even more. So yeah, if you've seen my, my guitar stuff on my main channel, check that out. Uh, I'll also have a Patreon. Also going to go over a lot of music theory stuff. So I'm excited to explore the ukulele with everybody out there through song lessons, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, yeah, let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see. And thanks for starting the journey with me.